Yeah? It's the perfect infinite Mobius. And if I animate that self-organizing golden spiral that you actually find in the center of your heart muscle, which is doing all this compressing, and the layers of the heart muscle are those seven layers of the tetra, I get that golden spiral on that donut, and I see the shadow on the wall of the cave called A, B, C, D, E, F, G. E pluribus unum, from many one, get up off the flat land, lift up off your cross and follow me. Yes. So, if you see how to recognize the alphabet of the symmetry of light, you could then dream in the physics of creation, which is the physics of how electric fields compress and touch, non-destructively called, to make a word. And now if I index that spiral by the tetra, I have Aleph, Beit, Gimel, Dalit, okay? Georgia, Hebrew, which was a software for genetic engineering, controlling the angle of the braid of DNA, which you saw how, is how is so important at the moment of death. Yeah, that I'm looking at Aleph Beit Gimel Dalit. I'm looking at the software that allows DNA to absorb electric fields and thus be braided. Now you can take that and you can speak Aleph Beit Gimel Dalit, and if you speak it clearly enough into a spectrum analyzer, then the sonic hologram Aleph is the optical hologram. You see, that's the synesthesia of that device. This was called spectrograms of the Hebrew alphabet, which I replicated. And if you take the superset of the tetra, you have the dodeca, and those angles are the higher alphabet forms. You see, A, B, C, D, E, F, G, etc. And now if I remove the donut and leave just the spiral, A, B, C, D, E, I haven't changed the shape of that spiral, only your point of view. This is called consumed perspective, or equal as one from anyone. The ability to recognize how to get to the next dimension requires seeing the shadow on the next lower flat plane. <clears throat> so these angels were trying to tell you, you could launch your charge field into the stars and become part of the arc angle. Okay? the angelic domain. This was really the science. Now, we don't have time for all of this, that the fact that each individual letter is infinitely fractal, that was the A, this is the S. And what that implies for um, interpreting the Bible and the true gematria, which is a three-dimensional waveform mechanics, etc. Sort of it's quantum mechanics of magnetic domains weighted together. This is the word, bray sheep, the first word of Genesis. It's actually the physics of how to turn yourself inside out on the surface of a donut, which is the origin of all creation. Okay, so the climax of this little conversation is called Whale Dreaming. Now, there's a new movie out funded by uh, John Lennon's son, Ju Julian Lennon. Justin, I'll be with Whale Dreamers, thank you. From Australia, yes. You, Kim Kinders, but you know they're our friends there in Australia. And in the movie Whale Dreamers, now I've got to find the right slide, it says 186 PC, here we go, 186. Okay. Now, the reason we want to understand how that works is um, if we, well, let's start here. In The Lord of the Ring, we realize that the DNA braids itself into a torus ring donut based on the shadows of a certain alphabet sequence of letters seen in the movie Lord of the Ring, which came from Finland and Hungary, which actually came from Alpha Draconis. And those sequence of alphabet letters were the symmetries to turn DNA into a ring donut. And if you looked at the micrographs, you see when DNA becomes a ring, you are Lord of the Ring because <laughs> your DNA is phase conjugating, imploding, and projecting something that requires <laughs> And that's what Frodo was sort of up to. And and the angles that got DNA to that form, <clears throat> this is one rung of the ladder of DNA, the hex and the pent, and there's all kinds of fun here, and we're kind of compressing here tonight. But this is what I was speaking to you about, the tetrahedral arrangement of the codons of DNA, saying, if your DNA can swallow this charge, then biology can remember it. Otherwise, <laughs> there's only two kinds of matter, matter and doesn't matter. And if your biology can't absorb the charge, then it doesn't matter. Yeah. Right. There's no inertia stored, thus no mass. So, 
The Sri Yantra is nine golden ratio three-dimensional tetrahedron nested because nine phase conjugating torus domain charged donuts, seven chakras plus two above, total nine. The Enneagram, the Ennead, okay, the, the great nine, <clears throat> the nine steps of Palenque, the nine roofs of the pagoda, etc., etc. It takes nine of these donuts, phase conjugating, to make a plasma body alive. Not only is that your plasma body, but it's also ang angelic. <laughs> and I'm about to show you a little bit hint, intro to the science of those. First, we start with the movie Lost Lindsay. Lost Lindsay, thank you very much. I, we're good here. We're, culture. This is culture. <laughs> so, in the last Lindsay, the kids assemble the Sri Yantra and they realize they can switch on and off the power grid and they can travel into stars. So, half of the physicists studying plasma domains, which I'm calling angels, <laughs> half of the physicists at Los Alamos National Plasma Laboratories are now working on this problem. They've discovered that every X number of thousand years, a plasma storm hits just off South Australia, where Whale Dreamers was filmed. And the shape of that plasma storm is nine donuts. This is this is uh, Tony Perrin, the whole staff of the plasma labs of the world's leading plasma physics laboratory. And they've called that plasma storm Vishnu, for reasons you're about to see. So they got kind of excited because they made a model of that plasma storm in their physics laboratory, which took them many years. And then they walked out in the parking lot and found out that the Native American Indians had carved that plasma storm in their rocks, not only in America, but also in New Mexico, in Spain, in China, in Tyrol, in United Arab All over the world, the same plasma storm had been carved on the rock. The shaman knew that if you can't steer that tornado, <laughs> you're toast, sorry. <clears throat> now, the process of steering these tornadoes requires something called uh, a heart. So the ability to make that heart is the ability to make the centering force to navigate these plasma domains, this angelic kingdom. Now, we don't have time for the whole sort of story here, but this is this is Vishnu, or sometimes Shiva, in an envelope that God inhabits a wave envelope in the sense that the angelic entities are plasma beings the size of stars. So your ancestors called Anu, meaning sun god, they did not go to so much trouble to cook up gene pools for no reason. Your, the electric result of your life is something that stabilizes the birth of stars. Once you understand what it is you're destined to grow up to become, it's really true. You're destined to become the stuff of stars. And we know that if a million children sing at the same moment, twice, a dramatic effect on the solar flares was measured. We also know that focused human attention radically contains radioactivity. And we also know why. Because fractality is what holds atoms together, and fractality is what holds you together. So in an atom, there is gravity because the nucleus is fractal or self-similar to the electrons. Einstein didn't get it, but now you know. And for you, you have gravity to the extent that your inside is like your outside. That's called being fractal. The psychology of that process is called empathy. So if you decide you want to feel someone outside you as if they're inside you, you make a picture inside, which is self-similar to what's outside. And if you do a good job, then the tornado falls in love with you because you feel its pain. Remember, pain is not a mistake God made. Pain is your body, and it could be a star informing of you, you of where fractality is bleeding. Yeah? And you restore that bodiness, that wholeness, by choosing to feel outside as if it was inside. Anyway, to complete this little story, this, this plasma storm, two vortex tornadoes, which become the Star of David and the picture of phase conjugating, create a tunnel of light into the stars, which can be steered in the same way as your kundalini can be steered. If you've ever asked 
a shaman how he steers a tornado. Do you know how they do it? You can watch. It works. In the same way that Eric can call an angel, you steer a tornado. And this is the time now when the solar wind cometh, you know? Remember, the first helix of DNA codons, when the lightning struck the primal soup to form the first DNA out of proteins, and the DNA said, here come the lightning. <laughs> if you can catch the lightning, you enter the next axis of symmetry called dimension. 